Hi everybody, welcome to the Manifold channel. Let's spend a few minutes learning how to use Manifold. We're going to start by uh, how to launch Manifold and what we're going to do is we're going to use the so-called portable installation. Uh, there's two installations for Manifold. One is a standard uh, Windows uh, installation using Windows Installer and uh, the other one is uh, the portable installation. Uh, I highly recommend that you use the latest cutting edge build. Those are highly stable. Those are the ones that all the Manifold people use. And uh, the way a portable installation works is it's basically a zip file. And here it is right here. When you download the portable installation, you download that zip file. And when you extract that zip file, it creates this folder hierarchy right there. Both are named, you know, for the name of the build. In this case, we are using 171.3. Double click into the folder hierarchy. And there you'll see a bin folder, which is the one that uh, hosts the 32-bit uh, manifold release. And then there's bin 64 for the 64-bit manifold release. We're working with 64-bit windows, so we're going to use the 64-bit manifold release. Double click into that, and here you see manifold.exe, that's the executable. Double click that to launch manifold, and manifold fires right up. Let's move the, uh, the screen into view here, and uh, we're, we're using a, a fairly small screen, uh, a very fairly small display window because we're filming this for uh, YouTube, and that has limited resolution. Uh, normally in real life, what you'd do is you'd work with uh, a uh, you know full mo full large monitor and probably actually two or three monitors because uh, the more monitors you have for GIS the more effectively you can use you you can work. Uh, this is the basic user interface for Manifold. We have panes here to the right: the project pane, the layers pane, the contents pane. Um, we only have a blank project going, so let's open a real project. I'm going to click File, Open, and uh, we'll open the uh, the demo project which is here in Venice and it's called OSM Venice. It's the OpenStreetMap version of the uh, Esri uh, Venice demo that they use for uh, teaching ArcGIS Pro. We're going to follow along with that since a lot of people are coming from the Esri world uh, getting into Manifold. I'm going to resize it just slightly like that. Great. Uh, the project opens up and here you can see all the different things that are in the project. This one's a uh, a data source. When you see the cylinder like that, that means it's a data source. And what's inside of here is outside of the Manifold project. And all the other things here inside the Manifold project. A Manifold project is a, is a single file that uh, can store vast amounts of data, 64 terabytes of data. Manifold itself is a database. It's actually a highly sophisticated, very powerful parallel database that's designed for working with spatial data. It is as powerful, in fact, faster in, uh, with, facial, with spatial data than Oracle or uh, Postgres, uh, uh, PostGIS, on, the PostGIS Ensemble. Uh, so even though it looks like a desktop GIS, you're really working with a very powerful database here. It's just that all that is encapsulated so you don't have to mess around with administering a, uh, with, with administering a database. To open up something here, you double click. It's, for example, let's open up this map. And uh, when a map opens by default, it'll, it'll scale itself to everything in the map except for the uh, web server in the background. And here there's a back background web server layer, which is Bing Street Maps. If you control click on a tab here, these are all the different layers that are in the uh, map. There are tabs at the bottom. And uh, if a uh, layer is, uh, you can double click turned off. It's a, if it's disabled, that means the layer's off. So, for example, let's turn off the structures. Double click to turn the uh, structures back on. Double click to turn the ground surface back on. You can control click on a layer to uh, zoom to extend for that layer. So, for example, the Bing Street Maps uh, layer is uh, the layer for the entire world. We can get back to the view that we had using this back button. Let's learn how to uh, pan and to uh, uh, zoom in, in the map. Manifold, as, as you can see, is a quiet interface. It's not cluttered with too many buttons. And to pan, the default, you, the, the default cursor mode is navigation. Just click with the left mouse button and drag, and that's pan. So click and drag with the left, left mouse button, and that pans things around. The uh, Bing Street Maps image will slow things down slightly because we are working at a re from a remote location. Everybody is sheltering in place during the pandemic. So we don't have the fastest internet here, and Bing is only as fast as the internet, which can serve tiles for Microsoft. Uh, to uh, zoom, Manifold has an innovation. Right click and drag to create a zoom box. You don't have to pick some sort of zoom box tool. You just right click and drag. And as you see, that's very fast. Between uh, using the scroll mouse to uh, zoom in and out with the scroll with the wheel on, on, the, uh, on the mouse, and using the uh, right click and drag, you can get to uh, any kind of zoom that you want instantaneously. You can always get back to prior zoom level by going back through the stack using back and forward, just like you would with the browser. And at any time, like I say, you can control click on a uh, layer tab, like this OSM structures tab, control click on that, and it'll zoom to fit that layer. So that's the key, those are the key moves that you have to start learning. Left click and drag to pan, and uh, right click and drag to zoom box, to zoom to that box. If you like, you can also zoom to fit using this um, button, which will zoom to fit all layers, including Bing. You can 
click this to zoom out. You can click that to zoom in. Most manifold people don't use those except when they want to zoom in certain particular steps. Generally, it's a lot more convenient to use the scroll mouse into a zoom box to a particular zoom level that you want to see like that. Uh, Manifold has a different user interface than ARC or QGIS. QGIS. It takes you about two days to get your head around uh, the user interface uh, to uh, get that all worked into your muscle memory. And then after that, you'll discover that uh, you can uh, pan and zoom with incredible ease, uh, incredible ease of use. Okay, let's, uh, we've learned how to pan and zoom. We've learned how to double click layers to turn layers off and on. Let's learn about what some of the other layers are in, in this map. Uh, if you look here in the project pane, these little icons give you a hint as to what the various components are. Component is a manifold word that just, word that just means item. It just means item in, you know, in the project pane. You can have thousands of items in a project pane. There's folders and things like that you can use to uh, organize them, which you obviously would if you have thousands of such things. The uh, OSM structures uh, layer here, right there, is a drawing. You can see that from the icon that's a drawing. And uh, the uh, Venice ground surface a layer here, Venice ground surface, is a raster. Let's turn off structure so we can take a look at what that raster looks like. Uh, Manifold uses the term image to refer to rasters. Uh, why does it use image? Because uh, the idea is, to, uh, since Manifold is rather low price, to uh, become accessible to people that don't know GIS all that well and might, might be scared by the word raster. They don't know what a raster is, but most of them know what an image is. They understand that images have to do with pixels. Manifold uses the term image to mean both photographic style images like uh, satellite type images and it also uses the word image to refer to terrain elevation surfaces, which are rasters with a single channel, or to any other kind of raster, like a, a multispectral raster data uh, that can have, uh, you know, a dozen different channels to, uh, you know, within different frequencies. All those are called images and manifold. Uh, you can call them rasters if you like. Uh, the manifold documentation uses both the term image and raster. Drawing is what, how manifold refers to a vector. Uh, and again, that's because a lot of people tend to know what a drawing is. They think to know a drawing is something with lines and stuff like that. But not everybody understands what a vector is, uh, given the uh, regrettable reduction of mathematics skills that we have in uh, modern times. Um, let's turn these uh, this uh, OSM structures back on. Let's turn off the Venice ground surface, and let's turn click on the Bing Street Maps image. What's cool about maps is that uh, maps are basically containers. The map has nothing to it. If we right-click on the map and choose Properties, uh, we can see that a map basically has a bunch of entities and it has a coordinate system, and that's it. Uh, everything that's in a map it could be in a different coordinate system than the map. Uh, to see what coordinate systems are used by items in the map, we click on the contents pane here, and the contents pane has a variety of sub-panes. The component pane um, it tells you what the coordinate system is of these various things. So for example, we can see that the uh, Bing, that the map itself uses a pseudo-mercator. That's what most uh, web servers use, and the Bing uh, server itself uses pseudo-mercator as well. If we click on OSM structures, we see that that uses latitude and longitude. Note that the component pane here, the contents pane, it's, it's not modal. It automatically reacts to changes that we make here by updating. So these various uh, layers here, they're all in the latitude longitude, and they're being reprojected on the fly into the, uh, into the uh, projection used by the map. If we like, we can click open, double click open the OSM structures. Let's double click that. Double click open the OSM structures uh, drawing. And uh, I'm going to shift click on the title bar here. Well, actually, we can click between open windows. They open up here in the title bar. Let's open up the, uh, here's the ground surface. And here's the uh, OSM structures. And there's the map. We can undock a layer by shift clicking the, the uh, title tab. And that allows us to reposition, you know, the window wherever we want. And uh, we can zoom to fit, as you can see there. Right click and drag to zoom in. And uh, we can see all these different layers at the same time. I'm going to click on this, and then I'll close that layer right there. Uh, all these things can work interactively at the same time. And you can see how the OSM structures here are seen in their original kind of latitude and longitude projection. When you click a, a, drawing, click a drawing open its own in, an, in a window, it will show in whatever latitude, whatever native projection that it uses, in this case, latitude and longitude. And Manifold can reproject stuff on the fly so fast that uh, you can have 100 gigabyte images that are in one projection and Manifold will reproject them to say Pseudo-Mercator so uh, you know they appear uh, normally with something like Bing Street Maps and uh, likewise with uh, you know 100 gigabytes worth of vectors and all that re will reproject on the fly so fast that you'll never notice that when you're panning and zooming uh, in uh, this map right here that there's any sort of reprojection on the fly going on but it really is taking all this from latitude and longitude and it's reprojecting it on the fly. Uh, all these uh, different uh, uh, windows can be open and operational at the same time. So let's zoom this out a bit. And uh, for example, if I do something like uh, 
I'll control click and drag here in this window to select uh, those uh, structures there and you can see that they select right in, in there as well if I shift control click and drag to deselect part of them they deselect part of them here as well shift control click and drag to do that to, to deselect there control click is uh, a basic move for selection in manifold that's very similar to the control click that you would do to say highlight uh, a file in Windows Explorer or in many other settings uh, that's also true of uh, say if you open up a, uh, a table if you look at what a, a drawing consists of uh, you can see that for all these different drawings, for example, the uh, OSM structures in the, in the OSM, OSM structures table, for every drawing there's a table. For the Venice ground surface there's also a table. The table is where all the actual data is. The drawing itself uh, contains no data whatsoever. The only, drawing, the only thing the drawing contains is some properties. It says what table to use, that's where the data is, and it says what field in that table to use for the geometry, and then it has some properties that say how to style that, how to make it appear in the drawing. Uh, so, for example, I can pop open the drawings table here. I'm going to right click on the OM structures tab and I'm going to choose open table and that'll pop open the table for that. Uh, I can leave the stock and move it to another another row below here by control clicking on that. That's kind of a shortcut for opening it up in a, in a layer below. And uh, you can see the different fields, the different attribute fields that are in that drawings table. Here's the geometry uh, field from which the, the, the uh, drawing takes its geometry. Now, what's neat about this is that if you like, you can... Uh, I'll close this table. If you like, you can create as many drawings as you like from the same table. So let's click on that drawing, click copy, and then down here I'll click paste. So there, there I just created OEM OSM structures 2. Let's click paste again. I've clicked, uh, created OEM structures 3. Let's double click this one open, undock it, and uh, resize it to being about that size. And uh, let's undock the map as well to make that smaller so it doesn't quite, quite so much clutter as much room. Uh, this is going to get a little busy because we're working with such a small viewport here in in the video. Uh, trust me that if you when you if you can move all these you know windows around however you like on your Windows desktop, especially if you have two or three monitors, it's way more convenient. You can keep two or three windows open to the same thing at the same time. And let's uh, double click open OSM Structures three. So now we have the uh, you know data from the ta same table open in three different drawings in three different windows. They're all synchronized. If I you know. Uh, control shift drag here to select some uh, some of the structures in in this drawing they're selected there and they're selected there and they're selected there and they're also selected in the uh, drawings table as well uh, which we can see by uh, you know scrolling around through the table and you'll see various records that are that are selected that we selected in, in the in the table let's close that so all these things uh, work interactively here in the map I can choose edit select none and the selection disappears on all these windows all these different windows can be zoomed and uh, styled independently, which is very convenient. If, if you like, you can have a high resolution window uh, that where you zoom far in to see something, a particular detail in one part of a drawing while you're looking at the overall drawing in, a, in an overall map like this. You can also style all these different things differently. The map, for example, uses the OEM OSM structures drawing, which is right here. So we'll leave that, we'll close that one so we don't accidentally restyle it. Let's take a look at the style pane here, which is one of the panes in the component panel. Here's style. If I like in this one here, I can change the styling away from this. Uh, well, let's uh, let's use a different palette here. Let's use a different color blur palette. Let's use a pastel update style. And you can see this drawing is now styled differently. It's taking its data from the table. It's just using uh, different style properties. Uh, OEM structures too. That's a different drawing. Let's make uh, everything here a, a fixed color. And let's make it uh, let's make it uh, well let's make it this color right there. And as you can see, all these different uh, drawings can be can can appear independently of each other. Let's uh, dock this uh, map window, and uh, let's uh, drag and drop some of these in. So let's let's drag OEM structures two into the map. You can see there it is right there. Let's close that. Let's drag OEM structures three into the map. There it is right there. Let's close that. And I can double click these layers off. They're all stacked on top of each other, so the highest layer will hide whatever's below it. The labels, uh, the, the layers in stack order are from the left one is the highest, the, the bottom one is the lowest. So obviously you want to take something like the Bing Street Maps image, which is going to cover whatever it's over. And if I drag it all the way here to the left, Bing is going to cover, cover up anything below it. So let's uh, let's drag that Bing, Bing layer all the way to the bottom. Another way to work with layers is the layers pane, and here's the layers pane. It shows all the layers that are active in a particular map or a t or a table. It treats fields as a you know, think about it as layers. So we can turn things off just with a single click here, like that. 
and let's turn the uh, OEM structures here on. And if you like, I can control click that to select that and then move that up like that. Uh, so that changes uh, you know, the uh, order in the display stack or I can move it down and you can see how the OSM structures thing moved from there to layer from there to there. Let's move it back up so it's the upper layer. Uh, and uh, let's see what else we can do. Let's learn what some of these other panes do really quickly. Uh, we won't take too much time with this because we've seen how to dock and undock. Let's work with the, uh, the landmarks, which are these landmarks right here. I'll turn off the labels. In a future video, we'll see how to, how to create labels. They're extremely easy to use. With the focus on the wiki landmarks uh, layer, uh, now all the clicks that I do into the map are going to happen, going to apply to those. So I, anything that I do, like a selection move, like a control, uh, shift, uh, control drag uh, box is going to select that. Shift, control, drag, deselects it. Alt-click is the standard manifold move for picking. So you alt-click something to pick it, and when you pick it, it appears in the automatically in the record pane to show attributes. So if you want to see longer uh, fields like this one here, uh, you can hover the uh, mouse button over it, and it'll, and it'll show the content of the tooltip, or you can right-click on it and choose Edit. And that gives you the uh, opens those up in the uh, in the full comments dialog here. When something is alt click like this, you can see the coordinates. Uh, that's the coordinates at which that particular point is located. Those are the values. If I go to OSM structures, let's uh, let's zoom in here, and I'll alt click uh, one of the structures. That shows the attributes for that. This particular one has a name. It's the Biblioteca Nacional Marciana, and click on coordinates, and that gives you a list of all the coordinates that make this that comprise that and you can see the different coordinates lighting up with the with the alt click here's the basilica san marco that's the famous basilica byzantine basilica ancient basilica in uh on uh saint mark square in uh in uh, venice okay uh what have we done so far we've learned how, a, a bit about what the record pane does uh let's learn what the transform pane does i think that's pretty cool so let's uh, let's switch to the landmarks and let's work with the landmarks. We'll use those as our subject for the transform pane. Uh, what the transform pane does, we click here and we go to transform. Uh, it automatically operates. It's like a geoprocessing toolbox in uh, Esri. So if you uh, choose something here, for example, buffer, uh, that's going to apply to uh, the wiki landmarks. And here what I've done, uh, wiki landmarks is in latitude and longitude, so it's treating with disease it's creating a buffer of one degree we can 0001 uh, which is a uh, one degree and that's a lot that's a lot smaller but you know what, what, uh, what okay let's make that's let's trim off some of these zeros and those are fractions of a degree now degrees are kind of a stupid uh, metric to use so let's uh, quickly reproject uh, the uh, uh, this layer wiki landmarks from latitude and longitude let's reproject it into well Let's uh, choose Pseudo Mercator. That's a convenient coordinate system because it's uh, in meters. So if we click Update Component, now uh, Wiki Landmarks is in uh, Pseudo Mercator. And uh, in fact, let's uh, let's do the same with structure. We're going to change that from latitude to longitude. We're going to reproject the component to uh, uh, Pseudo Mercator. Uh, if I wanted to, I could reproject it to something way more. I use one of the favorites or anything in the EPSG system or anything in the standard system or any of the custom systems manifold knows absolutely thousands of uh, uh, these projections. If uh, any of these two conversion systems, you can use grids. Uh, manifold hat knows uh, pretty much every grid that's uh, used in the planet for high resolution things like uh, NTV2 and Adcon, Harn, Adcon, and those sorts of things. All those are built into Manifold. And uh, Manifold uh, will provide you with a roster of various different conversion methods that are known. Uh, in fact, all conversion methods that are known to EPSG, which, is, which are hundreds of them. Uh, so, okay, we've done that, and now we're going to reproject. So now OSM structures is in uh, uh, latitude and longitude as well. Back to Wiki Landmarks, since it's now in uh, uh, Pseudo Mercator, when I do a transform and I click on buffer, notice here that the units are in meters, and you can see what the different meters are right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create buffers that are uh, 400 meters, and you can see that Manifold uh, gives you a live preview. So, for example, if I change this to uh, 200, there's 200 meters and there's uh, 100 meters. Manifold will automatically uh, show you what it's going to do before it does it. This preview feature, which Manifold does live, is one of the most useful things, I, I think, in Manifold because it really saves you from committing a lot of errors. Because for starters, you can see what the data is that you're working on and you can see what's about to happen before you actually commit it by clicking Update Field. And if you don't want to commit the change, for example, you don't want to convert those individual points that are in the Manifold layer to uh, these area objects that are buffers, 
uh, you can change this action button to add component. And uh, when you add component, let's uh, rename that component. Let's call this uh, buffers table. And we're going to call the drawing just simply buffers. I just clicked on the options thing there. Click uh, button here. Click OK. Now when I click add component, it's going to add those buffers objects as a uh, as a new drawing. So let's uh, drag and drop buffers into the uh, into the display. And those are the buffers that we just created. Uh, let's color those buffer buffers. So we're going to use the style pane for that. And uh, Manifold has three rows of controls in the style pane because every Manifold drawing uh, can contain areas and lines and points. It's not like Arc or QJS where each layer can, can, can contain only lines or only areas or only points. Uh, Manifold can, control all th can contain all three within a single drawing. And so there's three style controls for areas, for lines, and for points for each layer. Uh, and this is the basic overall style con control. This allows us to uh, change a whole lot of different variables all at once. Uh, you know, lots of different styles, different different ways of doing it. And uh, this is the foreground color. That's the, that's used for the border, so we can change that to there. So they just can make that an orange color, or let's make it a uh, blue. And uh, this is the uh, fill color, so we can make that uh, orange like that. I kind of like to use black for outlines. It's a uh, it's kind of a specialty thing to use uh, other colors. And uh, we can use the layers paint to set the transparency on that. So let's make buffers 50%. As you can see, I'm going back and forth between these different panes, and you can see there's the that's opacity 50%, so the background layer shines through. The key panes that you're going to use with Manifold all the time is you're going to use the project pane, you're going to use the layers pane, you're going to use the contents pane, and within the contents pane, you'll use uh, the record pane, the style pane, the transform pane, and the select pane. We've seen how the tra transform and style pane work. Let's do take a quick look at the select pane. I'm going to click it on OSM structures, and uh, if we open the table for OSM structures, I got a kind of off screen here. There's the OSM structures table. Control click on that, so we'll move it down here like that. And you can see uh, most of the uh, records, most of the objects don't have uh, a name. There's only a few of them that do. So let's use the select pane to uh, select all cases where there are non null values in the uh, name field. So it gives us a preview of what it's about to select in blue preview color. Click Replace Selection, and there we've just selected all those. Up here in the map, we can choose something like Edit, Select Inverse. So now we've selected all records where there is null in the name. Or, or I could do it here, where I can uh, choose like, uh, let's choose every place where there are non-null values, and I'll replace the selection. So that's non-null. Let's uh, choose every... Okay, what am I doing here? Let's choose every place where there are non-null values, not in the geometry field, but in the name field. That's the one I wanted to do. Okay, so let's click that. We've just replaced the selection. And now in addition, let's find, let's further refine that selection to those where the height, each each structure ha has a height to it, where the height is greater than or equal to value height, greater than or equal to an expression, and that expression is going to be 1, 5, 15. Uh, and that again is going to show us a preview all those things in blue preview color are the ones where the height is greater than or equal to 15. Um, and uh, what I want to do is I don't want to replace selection. What I want to do is I want to intersect with the selection. So the previous selection is all those uh, uh, objects, all those areas which are, have non-null names. And uh, this pending selection is the ones where the height is greater than or equal to 15, which intersects that. So click intersect with selection. And the result now is we have a selection of all those objects which are uh, which both have a name and which also have a height greater than or equal to 17. Now, if you don't want to do selection, if you don't want to do things like, uh, you know, use SQL for selection, uh, you can uh, do this uh, sort of stepwise process of selecting things uh, by using this command button here to intersect, to replace, to add with, uh, to invert the selection, and those sorts of things. Uh, or you can uh, learn how to do selection. For example, let's find all, all areas that are points or all uh, in the selection pane where the geometry is a point. And to do that, you click Edit Query, and Manifold goes ahead and writes an, uh, an SQL statement for you. In this case, select everything from OSM structures where the geometry is a point. Geom is point is one of the hundreds of functions that Manifold has, uh, which enable you to do uh, fast and cool selections really quickly. This is the command pane. This is how you write selection, how you write a, a SQL in Manifold. Uh, this is the uh, Query Builder, where you can uh, do all sorts of cool stuff we want. We can drag and drop. Uh, the uh, OSM structures thing here, and this gives us all the different names. So we can, you know, if you want to automatically add a field without typing, you just double click it and it puts it in right there, uh, and uh, all that sort of thing. And you can do things where select from where a geom point is, 
that and where something else is something else and you know on and on and on uh, so that's a great way to use uh, learn how to use sql i think that's enough for now we've seen how to do basic navigation remember there's that right right click and drag to zoom box uh there's a uh, let's just edit to select none uh, there's a control click to select things you can also shift control drag to select everything within the box there's other moves to select everything which is touching the box which is fully in the box and uh, all that sort of thing shift control to invert the selection everything anything that's touch, touching that you can also use these various uh, menu functions as well uh, we've also learned how to use an alt click which is the pick I'll click there uh, to uh, pick something. And when you pick an object, you're picking it for editing. You know, you can do things like you can uh, change the uh, fields. You can uh, uh, move objects around to wherever you want it to be. I'm going to move that guy right there. And I'm not going to update that. I'm going to right click and choose undo changes. So I don't actually uh, don't mess up my nice neat uh, uh, landmarks uh, drawing or my nice neat structures drawing. Uh, and uh, one last thing. Ah, yes. Yeah, one last thing. Let's learn how to use a. Uh, uh, Locations. There's a location here for Venice, and what's the location? It's simply a, it's what Esri calls a bookmark. So here in the locations button, we can jump to location. And there's Venice. Uh, creating a location is extremely easy. Easy. Here uh, is uh, San Marco. Let's uh, save current location. Let's call that San Marco. All right, and uh, let's uh, go back here to the main view of Venice, and uh, here's the Rialto Bridge. If you know Venice. Uh, this is where you go to buy ex overpriced uh, jewelry and uh, uh, other souvenirs. So let's uh, save current location. Let's call that Rialto. Whoops, I double clicked that open. I want to just click that once to rename it. Rialto. Actually, that accident that is pretty cool. I can double click that open, and you can see all that a location is. It's a location. It's in plain text. It's JOSM format, and the scale. That's it. And uh, so there's the Rialto. And let's do something really crazy. Let's uh, control click here to uh, uh, zoom out to all the full extent of Bing Maps. And then I'm going to right click and zoom here to the uh, east coast of the United States. Zoom here to New York. Right click and drag to zoom to New York. And uh, let's uh, zoom click, right click and drag to uh, zoom to uh, Central Park. Right about there. And uh, let's uh, save this location. We'll call it current location. We'll call that. It's called a uh, central. Man, I've got to type this right. Central Park, New York. Okay, and now we can jump around to uh, Venice, back to uh, Central Park, to the Rialto, to uh, San Marco. As you can see, uh, locations work instantaneously. Uh, they're really handy to have. Uh, when you save them, they're, they, they persist because obviously there are components in the map, so they save it. To save the map, we just click File, Save As. For example, click File, Save As. Uh, uh, let's call this uh, My OSM Venice. Click Save. And we've just created, saved the map. That's a pretty big map because these, uh, these uh, train elevation surfaces here are pretty big. These rasters are pretty big. Uh, and here's the uh, flood stage for uh, Venice and uh, for one meter flooding. Uh, so if you actually take a look at how how big these uh, uh, these uh, projects are, some of them can be uh, pretty big, and uh, you can see they, uh, for example, here's a uh, MyOSM is a uh, that's like half a gigabyte, it's 500 megabytes. Uh, you don't care it's that big because uh, uh, Manifold is just instantaneously fast, so we can do file close, save changes, nope, and uh, let's open up another drawing. Let's open recent projects. Let's open a Venice. It opens instantly. Uh, there's no pause. There's no hesitation. Uh, in fact, we can uh, close Manifold all the way. Let's uh, relaunch Manifold. And uh, we're back here where we were. Resize that so it fits the uh, video frame. Click uh, File, Open. Let's open My OSM Venice. Double click Open. And you can see it all opened instantly. I mean, Bing is going to take a while to fill in because that's that's Bing. It's you know it's coming in uh, from uh, you know uh, a distance. And uh, oh, what the heck? Let's do one thing. One more thing that's fun. Let's uh, let's add another uh, uh, image server file. Create new data source. And what we're going to do is we create these are favorite uh, data sources. And and one of them is a, a bunch of favorites. So for example, the uh, uh, Google Maps satellite. Let's uh, add the Google Maps satellite layer. And you can just drag and drop that into the map. You can see how quick this is. Manifold knows. 
just absolutely hundreds of these uh, image server layers. Let's uh, zoom in here to there and let's uh, double click on OSM structures, turn that off. And you can see you can just visit absolutely any place in the world uh, with just remarkable, astonishing detail. There's a Plaza San Marco. You can actually see the uh, there are six horses up here. Uh, uh, question, excuse me, four horses and a couple other monuments. And you can see they're, they're they're right here, and you can see their shadows, you know, from the setting sun. I mean, that that's is that high res an image, and uh, everything works. So, for example, if you want to go to Central Park, New York, double click on that. There's Central Park. Uh, let's go to the Rialto. So there's the Rialto Bridge in Venice. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of Manifold. I hope you can see how the interface, once you get your head around, and it does take two days, you know, you got to get that muscle memory in place. But once you do, you can do things with astonishing speed, uh, in, in many cases way quicker than you can with uh, QGIS or uh, ARC, uh, even though those products are very fine products. Uh, when, you, when you can do certain things in a more modern approach, like this uh, right-click and, you know, to, uh, to zoom box and uh, use a scroll bar and then, you know, pan and zoom like this, uh, it's all that just is remarkably fast. And all the editing moves, which we will learn how to do in subsequent videos, uh, once we get past the, you know, the original user interface stage and all that, are equally as fast. It's really just astonishingly fast and cool. Well worth investing a day or two to get the, get get your head around, you know, all that basic those basic user interface moves. Thanks for watching and goodbye from the Manifold Channel. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. As always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, Manifold.net. See you soon.